Well, how exciting was that last few minutes of that Cork game? Because from the outside looking in, it was just a frenzy. Yeah, it was. I suppose it was exciting. It was a great game for a neutral to watch. But um, for me, I was just out in the middle of it, and I knew we were running out of time. And when I saw that goal went in, I thought this was it. Cork was doing this again here in, in Semple Stadium. But um, no, it was an unbelievable finish. And when I saw that ball flick out tomorrow, so it was the right man in the right position. And Thank God it went in. Mm, because he'd probably been having a fairly quiet game up until then. I think he'd gotten one point from play after going to town probably against Watford in the in the previous game. Like it it still was the right man in the right position. Yeah, definitely. Um he'd he'd admitted himself he was a bit quieter than mm. usual. Um Jer Millerick was following him around and did quite well for large spells of the game, but Jake is that kind of a player. He was nailing all his frees. He's still he's still a confident player and um I knew myself that when that ball popped out to him, he was he was the one man that we needed mm. to stitch the goal, and he did thank God. What was the the final whistle like? It was unbelievable. It was a, a huge um, sense of relief that the game was over and Car couldn't come back at us again because um, Derek Connery's shot at the end was very. I was I was right in front of it watching it, and I thought it was over, and then it was wide, and I just couldn't couldn't believe it. And it was a huge sense of relief to to finally get over them and. Um, I suppose from two years ago, was we were extremely hungry for a monster title as well. Mm. And like, was there much expectation? Did you feel around the team this year? Um, I suppose expectation comes with uh, with our own self belief, and we knew that um, if we performed to our ability, that we'd have a right chance of winning the monster monster title. And I don't know, did we put any extra pressure on ourselves that um, there was that certain expectation, but. We just knew if we played to our standards and kept it up the whole way through um, for the full 65-70 minutes that we'd always be in with a shout. Mm. So. And talk to us about the, the under-20 semi-final now coming up. Nolan Park, it's going to be a massive game against Wexford. Yeah, definitely. Um, for any tip man, I think Nolan Park is, is fairly intimidating. But uh, no, it's going to be, It's hopefully it's going to be a great spectacle. But this, this Wexford team are, are very physical and they're going to come with a huge amount of um, desire, hunger, self-belief also. Um, they were unlucky with a few chances in the Leinster final. They know they're going to want silverware and they're going to want to be in the All-Ireland final in three weeks' time. What, what's it been like playing under Liam Cahill? Won the under-21 All-Ireland last year. Been involved with the minors as well with uh, the All-Ireland title in 2016, if I remember correctly. So what sort of influence has he been and what's he like in the dressing room? Yeah, Lee, um, Liam is great in fairness. I suppose he's... Uh, reputation speaks for itself and he, he's been quite successful over the past number of years and I've been lucky to be involved in, in some of the setups where we have been successful but um, Liam just brings a huge huge hunger to it and he always wants to see um, young Tipperary men um, in playing in the, in the top games and I suppose he, he wants everyone realising their potential so that's a big thing for him but he's got a great backroom team there as well with Mikey Beavens and TJ and Sean Corbett as well that they they put everything into Tipperary hurling. Mm. It's just um, it's really exciting to be involved in tip setups where you have backroom team that are putting everything um, and all the knowledge that they have into the Tipperary team that you're involved in. And the the game against Wexford for the seniors at the weekend and Jake Morris scored the final point again. I presume you were in the stands for that game, were you? Yeah, I was yeah. in the stands. Yeah. What was that game like to watch as a spectator for you? Um, as a spectator, yeah, it was it was hard watching. Now, in fairness, when when you see tip down um, by five points and going down to fourteen men, I suppose you're probably thinking the worst. But um, Liam Sheedy's side showed a huge amount of resolve, and just being involved with the with the senior setup this year, I know that they'd always have the self belief, and um, it was inspiring to watch how they dug it out at the end, and they came on, they came out on top after everything, and um, I suppose. A few favourable decisions might have went um, Wexford's way, but to come out over all of that was um, that's, it was unbelievable to watch. Mm. In fairness, and make you really proud. How much have you been involved with the seniors this year? Is it uh, have you been more so with the twenties or just ju jumping between the two? Um, well, I suppose all year I would have been training with the seniors, so mm. I have been involved in the extended panel for all of the games. I haven't got a chance to break into the. Well, I haven't been um, successful in breaking into the twenty-six this year, but. Um. Yeah. So a lot of the time, it's in the week leading up to the twenties, you'd be you'd be back with them and in around mm. them. But 
um, for most of the year I've spent training in with the seniors. What's, uh, what's it been like being exposed to, to Liam Sheedy? Is, is everything that you'd heard about him before, you know, 2010 winning the All-Ireland, etc. Has he lived up to the expectations you would have had? Yeah, he definitely has. Um, Liam, Liam Sheedy is excellent. He's, he's an excellent manager. He has everything so well organised and um, definitely he's got the, the best backroom. He's got a really, really good backroom team mm. and he... Um, he always tries to be to play um, with this type of freedom, and you can see that there in Croke Park the last day that the lads were just able to just let it go and, and show what they can do. Mm. And um, no, it's a joy to watch, and it's it's uh, really exciting to be involved in, in two good setups with um, great backroom teams. Is he a good man for a, for a G up speech before a game? Yeah, he um, Liam is well able to motivate you. Yeah, he's yeah. Um, he's always been a great motivator, but. He's a really good people's person, so he understands people and he understands the what drives people as well. So, mm, and tip against Kilkenny, I suppose a rivalry you were probably reared on, going back to two thousand nine up to now. There's been so many All Ireland finals. Would you have been at many of them? Yeah, I suppose I, I grew up watching the Kilkenny team and and their drive for five, I suppose. But um, yeah, so t tip and Kilkenny it makes for a hugely exciting All Ireland final, and it's just one that um really brings out the best in both teams and. I think Brendan Maher, he might have played six all Ireland finals and, he, and they're all against Kilkenny. So that just shows the amount of times that these sides have met in on the final day of the year. But um, no, it's going to be a great spectacle to be, be a part of. Brilliant stuff. Thanks, Paddy. Thanks a million, Chen. Thank you.